Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I've bisected one of our gas mask filters or our protective mask filters. As a subscriber had commented on the last video, I've been calling them gas masks, but they're actually called protective masks because they protect against more things than just gases. So I'm gonna try to not use the word gas mask throughout this video, but I probably will 10 times. So we've bisected one of these Mestel multi-purpose filters. This basically filters out everything. This is NBC, nuclear, biological, radiological, chemical, filters out everything. We bisected one of these. We do sell these at CanadianPreparedness.com. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to learn a bit about what's inside these things myself and parlay that knowledge onto you and hopefully answer some of your questions. So these have the standard 40 millimeter NATO ports. These are gonna fit most protective masks. I didn't say gas masks. There's also 60 millimeter, which is another common one. And you can actually find adapters for those so that you can use them with 40 millimeter protective masks. Almost said gas masks again, I'm learning here. Thank you, whoever that subscriber was. I can't remember your name, but I appreciate the knowledge. Basically, in a gas mask filter, there's two main components. There is a HEPA filter and there's activated carbon. Activated carbon can be made by anybody. It's very simple to make. You just have to make charcoal. I've done a video on how to make charcoal. Basically, you take wood chips, you put it in a medical container, which is not going to light on fire. And you put that in a fire and you heat it up for a few hours and you're going to be left with charcoal. You crunch that charcoal down, you mulch it up, you mix it with sodium chloride and water and you're going to get a paste and then you let that paste dry out and then uh, you're going to be left with activated carbon and then you want to break it up into these granules. It's very important that you don't make it into a very fine powder because the only way air can pass through the filter is if it's in these decent size granules. So not quite a fine powder, but you want it to be broken up as much as possible. Because how it basically works, all these little granules here, the more granules you have, the more surface area you have on the active carbon. Basically how it works, it's a process called adsorption, not absorption, adsorption. So as opposed to absorption, adsorption is the process in which items stick to something. So they're not absorbed into something, they just adhere to it. So this active carbon acts as a magnet for chemicals, toxins, um, gases, just to go over some of the stuff that this thing blocks out here. Uh, organic gases and vapors, inorganic gases and vapors, acid gases, ammonia, dust fumes, and mists. And of course, the HEPA filter is gonna provide uh, protection of very, very small particulates down to 0.001 microns or something to that effect. Uh, basically, it's going to prevent bacterias and viruses, bacterias, bacteria, and viruses from passing through the filter. So basically, that's all there is to it. It's a HEPA filter and this thing is stocked with activated carbon. Now you're gonna know when your gas mask is depleted when air can no longer pass through and you're finding it very hard to breathe in your protective mask because this active carbon is going to adsorb so much junk that uh, it's gonna get clogged and air is not gonna be able to pass through. So typically these things are gonna last between 12 and 24 hours, depending on the toxicity of the environment that you're in. If you're surrounded by tear gas nonstop, it's gonna last a lot less longer than if maybe you're you know, surrounded by tear gas for an hour and then you know, um, there's a bit of a break in between type things. So it really does depend, but you'll know for most uh, filters when they expire they are just gonna you're not gonna be able to breathe through them anymore and you're gonna have to replace them or else you're gonna suffocate and die now in terms of the expiration date of these things uh, the only reason why this expires there's two reasons 
there's three reasons actually. Um, there's three reasons why these potentially expire. Usually manufacturers are going to rate them for about five years. And I would say that you definitely can get, these are going to be functional long, long after five years if you store them properly. The reason why they're going to degrade is because even though when we send them to you, there's a cap on the end here, as you can see, and then there's, there's another um, cap on that side of the filter. And so I'd say they're sealed probably to like 99%. 99% of the oxygen can't get in. But there's that 1% that can. So if you're storing this around other chemicals or, you know, just uh, everyday vapors that are in your household when you're cleaning or something like that, it's slowly over time going to be adsorbed by the active carbon in here. It's going to take a long time. So we send them out to you, they're sealed, they're in these plastic bags. What I would recommend to extend the longevity of your filters is to vacuum seal them or go a step further and to even vacuum seal them in mylar. I'm not sure if an oxygen absorber would have any negative effect if you were to throw that in there. I don't think it would. As far as I know, maybe somebody in the comment section knows whether or not putting an oxygen absorber in if you were going to vacuum seal this would affect the the chemical reaction of this stuff and i think if you do that you're gonna these are gonna last a lot longer now the other two parts that could potentially degrade are the hepa filter the paper but like i said so long as that is totally sealed i, I can't see this uh, degrading too much over time uh, this is the main thing that you're going to be concerned about but again if you're talking about viruses bacteria things of that nature then you're going to want this hepa filter to be fully functioning there's also another component of this and that's the glue which attaches the hepa filter to this metal housing now we also sell these in plastic i should add uh, so in that case it would be glue adhering to plastic housing and that glue can also degrade over time now the thing with with gas masks unless you're talking about a really highly lethal poisonous gas or a virus if little bits get in it's not going to mean you're going to die uh, it might mean you get a little bit sick but even a gas mask which is only functioning at 95 percent is still going to take you much further than no gas mask at all which is what i'm trying to say so i would never throw out a filter and I've just said gas mask like 10 times without thinking about it. I apologize for that. I would never throw out a filter. I would always store them in the way I just outlined. And because if you need them, you have them. Maybe they're going to work. But if it's all you have, it's all you have, right? So of course you're going to use it over having nothing at all. And something which is less lethal, like tear gas, if you can block out the majority of that, it's going to allow you to function under those conditions better than not having anything at all. So just because a filter is not 100% doesn't mean it's not useful at all. Yes, if you're talking about extremely poisonous gases, uh, mustard gas or whatever kind of gas there is out there, uh, those things will probably kill you pretty quickly if lots of it gets into your mask. Just because it's not functioning at 100% doesn't mean it's a total lost cause. So just to give you an overview of the layering of how this works, this one still has everything intact here. Uh, basically what you have, new oxygen or new air, dirty air is gonna be coming in. This is where the clean air is coming out. So you have this perforated metal here so that the air can escape. And that acts as the first barrier between you and the activated charcoal or activated carbon. And then you have this piece of paper, which is just another particle filter. And then you have, this thing is full, chock full of this activated carbon. I lost a lot when I cut this thing open with a Sawzall. Um, I wanted to bisect it just so you could see exactly what's inside. And then we go here. Um, the first thing we have is this, another very a thinner particulate filter. And then we have a screen. So this screen is gonna make sure that no granules go through there and then we have another perforated metal thing which separates uh, this stuff the carbon from the HEPA filter 
And then there's just this plastic gasket or whatever you want to call it uh, that's in between the HEPA filter and the metal housing or the plastic housing and there's a few holes in there and that's where the dirty air is going to come in. So it first meets the HEPA filter then it goes to the activated uh, carbon and then you're breathing fresh air. So hopefully that sheds some light on the inner workings of a protective mask filter. I got it right the last time in the video I got it right damn it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. If there's anything that I've missed, feel free to add that. There's a lot of knowledge out there, so let's share the knowledge. Let's learn about these things together. You can make your own filter using this process. That's something you should be aware of also. There's how-to videos online, how to do that. Survival Lily uh, made a video where she uses a two-liter bottle and she uses some charcoal uh, in order to do that. I'm not sure if she activated that charcoal uh, using sodium chloride but uh, that's going to increase the resilience of the filter if you use the sodium chloride process as far as i know i'm not an expert on that i'm still learning all of that you can get these gas mask filters and the sge 400 slash 3 masks and the sg 150 masks at canadianpreparedness.com we currently have a door crashing sale going on because there's a lot of guys undercutting the market right now so i'm trying to price match you know anybody i can and we're selling them for 20 percent off so it's a good deal one week only it's the only way i can do this but if you want to support the channel get yourself a brand new gas mask and filters from canadianpreparedness.com thanks for watching canadian prepper out the best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.